Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number 11 in the authentication module titled Password Reset Poisoning via Middleware. All right, before we continue with the video, I'd like to announce that this video is part of a course that I offer on my academy. Now you might be wondering, why would I buy a course that is made available for free on YouTube? Well, there are four reasons why you might want to do that. Number one is that you gain early access to recorded material. As soon as I record new videos, I make them available through my course right away. Whereas on YouTube, they'll only be released on a weekly schedule. Reason number two is that you gain access to a Discord channel where you can ask questions. The Discord channel is divided into topics that we cover in the course, and if you run into any issues, you get to ask questions about anything related to the course material. Reason number three is that you no longer have to deal with YouTube ads or sponsor messages. And last but not least, reason number four is you get to support me. Any revenue generated from this course will go back into maintaining the academy and creating more videos and courses that will be made available for free on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in buying the course, make sure to check out the link in the description. And that is it. Let's go back to our video. If you do not have an account on the Web Security Academy, you can get one by visiting the URL portsvigor.net slash websecurity and clicking on the sign up button. I already have an account and I am logged in. So to access the exercise, I'm going to click on Academy. Select all labs. Do a search on authentication labs and then go to lab number 11 titled password reset poisoning via middleware. All right, let's get started. This lab is vulnerable to password reset poisoning. The user Carlos will carelessly click on any links and emails that he receives. To solve the lab, log into Carlos's account. You can log into your own account using the following credentials, and you're giving credentials to a regular user account. Any email sent to this account can be read via the email client on the exploit server. All right, so the target goal over here is to exploit a vulnerability in the password reset functionality in order to access Carlos's account. Okay, let's get started. Now notice over here, this is the built-in browser in Burp, and so all my requests are already being passed in my Burp proxy. I am using the professional version of Burp. However, you don't need to use the professional version for this lab, and so any features that I use here will be available in the community edition as well. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is click on my account and understand how the forgot password functionality works. To do that, we're going to use our regular user account, which we have access uh, to his account and then also to his email client. So let's click submit. You see over here, it performs a forgot password request that sends a password reset link to your email. So let's send this one to repeater and we'll review it later. Let's go to the exploit server, go down, click on email client. And you could see over here, we have an email to reset our password. So let's click on that. And again, let's send this request to repeater. So this is the request that is responsible for generating this page over here. And then let's say we change our password to password. And again, password, hit submit. And let's send this request again to repeater. All right, so we've got three requests that are responsible for performing the password reset functionality. So the first one is this one over here when you click on forgot password and then you submit the username of the user. And then the second request is the one that is uh, sent to your email. So what happens is that you're sent a temporary forgot password token that is tied to your user session. So this is tied to uh, my regular user account. And then this request generates the page, which allows you to put in the new password. And then once you put in the new password, it allows you to change the password. So the temporary forgot password token is right over here. And the new password, I just reset it to password. And again, password over here. All right, this all looks good. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to see if this request over here supports the X forwarded host header. And if it does, then we might be able to perform a header injection that will allow us to bypass controls in the application. So let's see if it accepts that header. So let's say x forwarded 
host and for the host let's put our exploit server link so let's copy this put it in here and hit send and we get a 200 okay so this is already a good sign that it does support this header over here now let's go to the email client and see if we got a link and we did so you could see over here this was the link that we used to reset the password and notice over here that you've got the host of the application so if we go over here for the origin here we go that's the origin or the host of the application so it's done correctly over here and then you've got forgot password and then you've got the temporary forgot password token however when we included this header over here and said hey listen the host is not that one it's this one over here which is equal to our exploit server what it did is that the application automatically trusted that this is the host and it generated the temporary forgot password token and it appended it to what it thinks is the host of the application however this is our exploit server so this is bad because the way we're going to exploit this is we're going to change this to carlos and hit send we get a 200 okay so what happens right now is this is gonna send carlos an email to carlos's email that has this link over here now carlos when he opens that email he's gonna see that he needs to reset his password and he's gonna click on the link now when he clicks on this link it's not going to redirect him anywhere however it'll make an entry in my lock server telling me that someone tried to access this directory in my exploit server so if we go back to the exploit server right over here and click on access log we should see an entry from the carlos user all right so carlos definitely got the email and clicked on the link you could see over here there's an entry from an ip address 10.0.4.214 and you could see it appended the temporary forgot password token of the user so let's copy this and put it in here and hit send now it's telling me i have a client error and that's probably because i pasted it incorrectly okay so hit send let's render this over here you could see over here this token is valid because if i had given it an invalid token so let's say m that we remove a letter it'll tell you that it's an invalid token. So let's go back to our regular token, hit send, and we know that it's a valid token. And now all we have to do is put in the new password of Carlos and it'll allow us to change Carlos's password. So we do that in this request right over here. Let's change the temporary token. We change it right over here as well. And then we're just gonna keep the new password at password and the new password to at password. So hit send. We get a 302, I believe that's a good sign, and a 200 okay. So let's close all of this. Go to my account and see if the password reset was successful. So we're gonna say Carlos with the password password and hit login. And here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the lab. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by performing a header injection in the password reset functionality. We usually script the exploit. However, because this does involve an exploit server, which I'm pretty sure the application only allows the user to click on the exploit server links, then we won't be able to script this in Python. Now in the next lab, we'll look at a different case of a broken authentication vulnerability. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Also make sure to check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.